What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today I just want to talk to you a little bit about kayak progression. There's been some stuff on social media lately about people progressing too rapidly or running things they shouldn't or with boats they shouldn't. So it's kind of a weird topic right now, but let's just dive into a, little, a few things that might factor into progressing very fast or the opposite very slow. And what are some things you can do to progress more quickly in your kayaking? So I think just some things that why people want to progress so quickly. I think one thing right now is just social media is just, it has such an influence in our lives and, and me too. I, I mean, I can't say that. You see people running waterfalls, doing kickflips off waterfalls. Now, now it's not just running stuff straight. It's, you know, can you do a tomahawk? Can you do a back freewheel? Can you do whatever off of a waterfall rather than just going off straight? And every year it's just like the ante's up and up. So to keep pace was kind of like the good kayaker or, or be a good kayaker. It kind of, you kind of feel some pressure to do those things internally. Um, and no one really forces us, but I think that's just one thing internally. Um, the other thing is since kind of that pace is being set like that, most of the people you paddle with are probably going to want that same thing. So if your group starts progressing rapidly, you feel kind of more pressured, I guess you'd say to progress more rapidly, even if they aren't saying anything to you. Again, it's just one of those internal things. Another reason is just, I think nowadays kids, younger kids are, are doing things that, you know, I wouldn't even think about doing when I was their age. And they just have lack of fear, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but that's just why some younger kids are doing things like the green or upper golly or whatever it may be, a uh, harder river that we may not have done as older people um, when we were boating. And one thing that allows, I think, the progression, again, for younger kids and older people are is the boats. The boats are progressively just easier to paddle, more forgiving. They take care of you. They have so much bow rocker. They ride up and over holes, so you don't really have to have the whole escape skills or play boating skills that you used to. And even if you don't have a roll, you can make it through most, you know, even class five stuff pretty easily with the boats nowadays. So... It kind of lowers the bar for how much skill you actually have to have to paddle a class five river which five to ten years ago the boats didn't take care of you as well so obviously you need a solid role you need play boating skills etc to do those type of things safely the oh, last reason is again kind of that social media influence like you want to be popular you want people to see you and it's like that the youtube sensation type thing you know you want to post your stuff on social media and to do that, you have to run cool stuff. You know, nobody cares about even running big rivers anymore. It's about doing cool things on those big rivers or whatnot. So, again, it's kind of keeping up with the Joneses type deal, which is so Facebook and social media has like amplified that so much. Where it used to just be the people you paddle with or the you know people you talk to on a daily basis know what you do. Now it's like everybody knows what you do, so you have to do something cool. And again, not a bad thing, but it's just kind of one of those things that leads to that. The problem with progressing too quickly, so what type of things can, or why is it unsafe, I guess, in, in some aspect. So if you progress too quickly without having the right skills, it can, first off, put yourself at risk for injury or, or death, maybe. And hopefully that's not the case for anyone, but like I said, you a lot of people are doing rivers they really probably shouldn't be doing, they don't necessarily have the skill or boat skills per se or boat awareness river awareness whatever you want to call it um and again it, they're relying on the boat to take care of them so you know if you do get in trouble in a spot you're not you might panic more than what someone with more skill would if you don't have the role you know you you can swim i see i do say i see way too many people nowadays swimming when they really shouldn't be. If, if you're on a class five river, you really should be rolling pretty easily and not have that issue. And you know, every all of us swim every now and then, but to just like roll over and then swim, that's one thing. Another kind of reason, you can set yourself back mentally and that can hinder your progress to regret, uh, that can hinder your progress to continue moving forward. So one of my buddies not too long ago, Almost been a year now. I got stuck in a bad, really bad spot, and he was—he's a good paddler. Didn't he should? I think he was at the right level or river, you know, with his skill level. It didn't have anything to do with that. Just got caught in a bad spot, and even that can set you back, you know, a year or more mentally. 
um, being able to get back in the boat, being able to kind of get past that near death experience. So kind of keep that in mind too. You know, you may not be scared now, but if something happens to you and you have a near death experience, that could really set your paddling back. So keep that in mind when you when you want to jump up to that next level. Another reason you can put others at risk. So say you're not really ready to run, you know, a class five river and you're, you go ahead and get on it. And you're like, well, the, the guy next to me or the guys, the group I'm paddling with, they'll, they'll save me if something happens. And that's really not the mindset you should have. When you're paddling with a group, you should really be all kind of the level, same skill level, all have the same type of safety training. So it's all an equal thing. You know, you don't want somebody to risk their life for you when you're not ready for something. Because all paddlers, I think, would probably risk their life for someone else, even if they don't know them. That's just kind of the community. So kind of take that consideration when you're running something big or and you're kind of relying on someone else. That shouldn't be the case. Comment some th experiences you have, people you know. You know, I'd like to hear about this kind of topic. I'm not judging anyone. Um, I think everyone could should kind of go at their own pace, whatever they want to do. And if someone jumps on a class five river after two months, that's not me to judge. You know, if they get in trouble, I would help them. And I'm not going to say a word to them probably, unless they are very unsafe. You know, I might say something, but I'm not one to judge anybody by age, level or anything. I don't know what they paddled. So yeah, now if I know somebody and they ask me my opinion, I will tell them my opinion, but I'm not going to go out of my way to to discriminate against somebody because they're young or something like that. You know, everybody has their own way of doing things. Some tips for some proper progression. I would say my first tip, and I kind of just talked about this, is please just learn how to roll. And part of that is just learning play boating skills, going in holes. Even if you don't know how to do tricks, flip over, side serve, just flip over, kind of get orient oriented with being disoriented, if that makes any sense. So. You know, if you're in a big hole, it's like being in a washing machine being thrown around if you haven't ever been stuck in a big hole before. And the more experience you have with that, number one, the less panic you have. Number two, you also have more bearings to where you are in the water, the more and more that you do that. So that's kind of a skill that you really need to have. And again, I see no reason why if you're paddling class five, you shouldn't have a solid roll. Now, again, there's part, there's water that's aerated that any of us could get in, it's hard to roll in, there's big holes that some of us get stuck in that nothing else can do anything about. But if you're just going down a wave train and roll and swim, you know, on your first attempt or something, that probably, you probably shouldn't be on that river. Um, but again, I'm not going to judge anybody, but I think that's a safe, number one safety thing, just have a good roll. Number two, please take a swift water class if you're going to progress and do some bigger some bigger rapids and bigger rivers, class four or five rivers, not only for you and the safety of everybody that you're going with, so you know what to do if something happens. Even if you get stuck or pinned, or somebody else gets stuck and pinned in your group, you really want to know what to do. And really, please, everybody take a swift water class. You know, a one to two day class. Nana Halo does a good one. Ace does a good class. Just a few that I know of, but yeah, please do that. It's good to know just the basics, if anything. Some people don't even know how to throw a rope correctly or when to throw a rope or when not to. Somebody's stuck in a whole way across the river. You don't throw a rope across the river. Other people get trapped in it. Things like that that, you know, you wouldn't necessarily think of in this situation. So, and to practice those things on a, you know, monthly basis because you do forget it. Again, I've already mentioned this, start play boating. And that really is where I got the skills. If you play boat, you roll. Say you go out on a day just play boats, turn squirt, and whatever it may be, playing a hole, you're probably rolling 20 to 40 times in a, any given day, where if you just went down and bombed down a river, and you might not roll at all. So it kind of keeps your roll crisp. Again, it keeps that panic that you might have if you roll over crisp, and it keeps you oriented when you're underwater. So play boating skills are crucial, especially getting out of big holes, um, getting out of ledges, anything like that. Teaches you all that kind of stuff. So. My advice, if you really want to step up your game, is start play boating, even if it's in a small hole. I think another big thing in stepping up in kayak and progressing is to have the right crew around you. And again, this isn't saying like you want people who can save your life. That's not it. You want the right crew as far as mentally, 
they're the crew that, that that hypes you up to be able to do things to get your mind in the right place and also you can rely on if something goes to goes bad you know you know they're going to be there for you but that's not the reason the main reason you're paddling with them again it's that connectedness of people you have i believe if anything like when i step up i want to run a river that I'm, i don't know that's that scares me i want to have like one of my friends or one of my good paddlers with me it kind of just makes you feel more at ease having somebody you know rather than jumping on something with a crew you don't know even though again the paddling community is one of those where i think anybody helps you at any given time but having that right crew gets your mind right in the situation and also they can help you throughout your progression get better and get better and show you tips and things like that you kind of grow as a group so you know at times you will have to step away from your main group to kind of get to maybe a different level of where they're at. But again, having that good crew on any given situation, I think is ideal. Getting mentally tough is another thing. It's okay to be scared. I think it's a good thing to be scared of rabbits. If you're not scared, it kind of puts you in that overconfidence place. You're not paying attention to the sieve over here or the big hole over here. I think it's okay to be a little scared. To be like scared out of your mind is not a good thing. That's on the other spectrum where you just can't concentrate on that end. So being a little scared and respecting the river, that's always a good thing to have a little nerves, especially when you're going something you haven't done. But also, again, you want to be mentally in the right mindset when you're doing something, especially if it has really bad consequences. Sharpen up your river running skills, your boofing and all that kind of stuff. You'll need that to do bigger class five creeks and all that. And just some in the southeast, you know, some good ones to practice on. The, the Teleco is a good one. The Upper Green. Even the green light, I would say it's more of an advanced type river. Up north, you have the top yacht, the upper yacht to do. And then when you kind of step up to that, you can step up to your game to like the full green, the pigeon drives. You can go up north and do the, the beaver, the red cat and all that. And that's kind of where I am right now. I really stepped my, my game to do like the raven fork or any of those. You know, you're going from rivers that have one or two really consequential rabbits to like every single rabbit is like... A death trap so i'm not at that confidence level yet but yeah practice on the rivers like the the teleco is a great one to practice it has a lot of good boosts on it don't really have a lot of consequences necessarily like baby falls little waterfall to practice on and then on the opposite kind of spectrum from that you can practice on like the the lower golly would be like a good big water run to hone in your skills surf some of those bigger holes you see yeah so those are just some basic tips i have for y'all as far as progressing i'd like to know what y'all do as far as progression and what have y'all done and any, again any other tips y'all have for me or anybody else out there and stay safe be careful and have good lines check y'all later thanks for noc for the cool hat and always for the gear appreciate it y'all take care have a good one <laughs>